Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to my new video. My name is Jimmy and in this short tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can recreate a similar wallpaper to this one I made a few months back now. Okay, so we're going to start off in Adobe Lightroom. Now this isn't the original raw file since I couldn't find it, however I will be going over how I shot it and pretty much how I edited it from memory. Okay, so how I actually took this photo was I lied straight on my back in my lounge room, I put my legs and my left arm up in the air, and then I held my camera with my right arm and took the photo that way. Okay, so since I was holding my Heavy 5D with just one arm and kind of close to my chest and at a weird angle, um, I had to use a relatively fast shutter speed and the slowest I could go without getting noticeable camera shake was 1 30th of a second. Now the reason it was that slow is because I did choose a relatively small aperture of f8 to get everything in focus and it was shot in a pretty dark room. Okay, so in order to get that shutter speed, I had to boost my ISO setting to 6400, which is pretty high. And that is partially the reason why my arm here might look too smoothed out or a bit fake, because I had to boost the luminance setting up to remove some of the noise within the photo. Now on top of that, what I did was I also kind of made it look a bit more unrealistic using a negative clarity value on just my arm. Now the reason I wanted to make it look a bit unrealistic is because I didn't want a photorealistic wallpaper and I wanted it to look a bit surreal or a bit fake because I did try it with a, an actual really good quality photo and it ended up looking a bit weird. Um, so I decided to smooth out my arm a bit to add a bit more of a fake look to the final wallpaper. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I just added a bit of a negative clarity value then adjusted the exposure slightly to get everything nicely exposed how I wanted it. So once we did that, what I did was I imported it into Photoshop, which you can see here. Now, like I said, I don't have the original file anymore. However, if I did, you'd see my roof here behind my legs and my arm. And then what I had to do was cut it out. Now, if you do have people willing to help you and you're not embarrassed to just lie on your back and look a bit retarded for a bit, um, you can get someone to hold like a green sheet or a solid color sheet above you and it would make things a whole lot easier for you. However, I did this when I was home alone because I didn't want anyone to see me looking a bit spastic. So how I cut this out was I grabbed the pen tool by pressing P. And if you're not sure how to make a selection with the pen tool, all you have to do is pretty much start at one point here and then pretty much keep clicking points along your arm or whatever you're cutting out. And pretty much you'll see this very faint gray line here and make sure that lines up um, along the lines of the thing you're cutting out and just pretty much trace around it like that. And when you reach the end, let's just say I was cutting around here, you want to click back to your original uh, point here and you'll see this little circle next to the pen tool that appears. And that'll complete your selection. Now what you want to do is right click and go make selection. And then you can choose a feather radius. Now I think I did use a feather radius and the higher resolution your photo is, the higher that value will have to be for you to notice it. Um, so I just won't worry about it for this example and you'll see you get a selection. So since you did cut around something, that selection is going to be your arm and your legs here. So if you want to delete everything else, you grab just your marquee tool, go right click, select inverse, and it'll select the background. Then just go ahead and press delete and it'll delete everything except your arm and your legs. Okay, so once we've done that, what I went ahead and did was I found this pretty cool picture which I thought would make a good backdrop. Now there is tons of pictures you could use for this. You can use other buildings. You can just make them jumping out of like a plane, falling out of a plane, whatever. Um, you can really get creative with this effect. However, I just wanted to do a simple building since I did create this for a friend who showed me an example. And once you've done that, what we can go ahead and do is go file new. And depending on your screen resolution, uh, you can change this to suit you. So for me, mine is 1680 by 1050 and then resolution will be 72 since that's what we use when we're working with screen and we will just call this wallpaper click OK and then we can go ahead and just copy our background by pressing Control A to select everything Control C to copy and Control V on our new project to paste and then we can adjust it however we want and then what I did just so it's not completely the same is I flipped it horizontally and flipped it vertically and got a kind of different looking picture here and then we can just go ahead and crop it by pressing our C key dragging all over it and double clicking to crop and then we can do the exact same on our arm and feet picture however this one we're going to have to scale down a lot so control T and hold shift in our corner to get relative scaling obviously 
which I just failed to do. Um, so control T, sorry, drag that in. And we don't want this to take up the full screen because then it'll look a bit odd. And just move that down. That should be pretty good about there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good right there. However, we can do a few things to improve it. So first thing we're going to do is create an adjustment layer by clicking down here. And we can just add a curves adjustment and kind of make this look a bit more dramatic. Uh, and then we can, you know, add more adjustments, add a photo filter. And I think I actually used Magic Bullet Looks to color grade this to get it kind of looking a bit cinematic. Um, however, you can do this in Photoshop, um, just apply some filters, uh, whatever you want, and then, yeah. And then I think I also desaturated the image a little bit, so hue and saturation, just bring down our saturation. And that's looking pretty cool right there. And then finally, what I did to kind of bring it all together was added a kind of radial blur onto the background to simulate um, a bit of motion blur. So to do this, I'm going to grab our background layer here, and drag it down to this new layer icon to duplicate it. Then I went up to filter, blur, and radial blur. We're going to set this to zoom. And I hate how you can't see a preview of this. It's kind of irritating. Um, but I guess the preview would be horribly slow. Then we can wait for Photoshop to do its thing. And that's looking pretty cool right there. We might press Control F to repeat the effect and add a bit more blur. And then what we can do is fade out our top layer so it's not as noticeable. So we'll change that to about 70 or 80. And that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That is how I created this wallpaper. So get creative. Um, sorry, I'm not supplying any images. Um, I'm not going to supply my hand and my feet, obviously, because I don't want a ton of wallpapers with this. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped anyone who was wondering. So if it did help, be sure to hit that like button to help my channel out. I very much appreciate it. And feel free to subscribe and suggest more tutorials as usual. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.